I'm here, welcome to 23, you're joining me for Vampire Girl 3, Chapter 9. Finn lays on the ground of your bedroom and the Black Lotus collapsed. Finn, wake up! You press your hand against his chest, feeling his heart pound at the same moment. Sly bursts into the room, looking around wildly. What the ever-loving Hades is going on? It's Finn. He's collapsed and I don't know why. Bill's warm body pressing your hand into different parts of his torso. His muscles tense to your touch. His hand, fi your hand finds a wet patch on his side. As you pull your hand away, you realize it's covered with blood. Finn was hurt more than he wanted to admit. Stupid Finn, always putting you first, never thinking of himself. Why shrugs and sighs. That man has to be unconscious for my healers to get to him. He hates accepting my help. So now would be the perfect time to summon one, don't you think? Dean nudges open the door, investigating all of the commotion. He enters, wearing only his well-fitted underwear. They leave little to the imagination. What's all the noise? He looks down at Finn on the ground. He smirks, as if seeing his brother torn to stubborn shreds happen all over all the time. Oh, I miss all the fun. I assume he's alive. You know, I'm taken aback by how casual he seems. He needs a healer. Help me get him on the bed. Slice people have it handled. Relax. Finn will be just fine. In the meantime, how about you and I go spend some time together in my bedroom? Finn needs his rest. We don't. I can't believe he's acting this way at a time like this. Oh. Throw a pillow at him and remind him I'm with Finn. Let him know this is the time, but I'm interested. That's somehow cheaper. Lash out. Put it back in your skimpy briefs and help me out here. Dean sighs dramatically as if you've asked way too much of him. I heard you yelling in my bed in your bedroom and hoped you were calling for me. Sorry to disappoint you, but that's not the case. Oh, rest assured, Princess. During my month you will find yourself yelling plenty in our bedroom. Dean leans down to Finn and grips him by the shoulders. You grip Finn's thighs and you both lift. Dean does most of the work, his shoulders and chest flexing with Finn's weight. Baron sniffs Finn and looks at Dean, growling as you both inch towards the bed. Back off, dog, or I might drop your master. Don't rile him. His teeth are sharper than yours. You've never felt the bite of my teeth, princess, but we can change all that. I promise I'm not a savage like Levy. You'd enjoy it. You plop in onto the bed and Dean takes a deep breath, turning to Sly. Healers? They're on their way now, but don't fright the princess. Finn is alive. He just needs rest and a touch of magic. The healers would tend to Finn here throughout the night. Princess, you are welcome to stay with him or take his bed if you wish. Or mine, of course. Or should I sleep? Stay with Finn and watch over him. Sleep in Dean's room for my own safety, or take the empty bedroom. I'll sleep in Finn's room, now that he's resting comfortably in mine. A bed is a bed. We all need our sleep. It'd be best if we slept alone. All of us, Dean, don't go slipping down to the club. Dean smirks. Very well, then. We will meet in the morning. Now, get some damned rest, everyone. You're all quickly becoming a distraction. Sly turns and leaves. Dean follows him out, each step his bare feet smacking the wooden floor. Your eyes wander to Dean's backside, a pleasant view for anyone. I sure know how to pick out my allies, don't I? The next morning, your eyes slowly open. Your body feels refreshed and energized. I feel a million times better. Those healers really help, but it could... It could just be finally sleeping on a bed. You look around the bedroom, completely empty. The hall just past the door is clear as well. Hello? Everyone is probably already in Sly's office. I should hurry up and get out over there. You jump out of bed, considering your wardrobe. You find a handful of outfits. More of Sly's doing, you suspect. You run a hand along the such wish fabric. I'll wear... A tight, strapping adventure look. Cute and trendy street style. I'll just go with that.
after a stretch and a yawn, you head over to Sly's study, passing all manner of hungover and dazed vampires in the hall. Sly and Finn stand at his desk, holding steaming cups of coffee. Oh, coffee. Finn seems tired, but he gives you a weak smile as you enter. Dean stands close to the fireplace, sneak, sneaking glugs of his flask into his coffee. He's dressed down somewhat, and he knows how good it makes him look. Good morning, princess. Finn, you're here. I am. I was so worried. I'll ask, are you okay? You scared the hell out of me. I apologize for giving you a fright like that. The blood loss must have gotten to me. By the time I noticed the bloody gash, I was already headed to the floor. But the healers held me. I've never felt better, princess. Held your shoulder, I was gazing through you with a smile. Good, because we need you in fighting shape if we're going to defeat Levy. Finn, Dean, and I were just speaking on that matter, actually. And as I said, the Prince of Envy is my problem to deal with. Levy won't live long enough to explain anything to you, Sly. But be that as it may, I've taken the liberty of increasing security around the Black Lotus. No one gets in without my permission. So we're safe. Sly nods, but Finn shakes his head, unconvinced. There are always ways to get to someone. That is true. I can control the Black Lotus, but are you vulnerable in other ways? What do you mean? Is there anything else Livy can use to get you a weak spot or a precious one? I hadn't thought of that. Well, we could go after... Her. My mother. My mother's body is in a hospital in Portland. Her soul is in a dungeon in Inferna. Finn and Dean both shake their heads no. The contract protects her. Levy can't break that no matter what bluffs he's told you. You're sure my mom will be alright? Finn nods with confidence, putting you at ease. Well, that's reassuring. With mom taken care of, that only leaves... S and P, my friends from Earth. Humans. If I were in his position, I'd target them for sure. The smell of pine and smoke fills the room as Sly puffs on a cigar. Dean has already lost interest staring into a crackling fire. Maybe not kill them, torture them for information, brainwash them perhaps. Why? You're being too casual about this. Those are my friends you're talking about. Just being strategic, Midnight Star. Helping as I can. You need to warn them. Let them know that the Prince of Envy is coming for them. And, uh, what good would that do? Your friends know how to fight a Prince of Hell. Well, no, but can they come here for protection? No, Ari. You don't want... Of course they can come to the Black Lotus. Sly's smile turns devilish. You swear you can see his fangs poking just past his upper lip. For a price. Don't bring them here. It's not worth it. Sly always takes more than he gives. Please, Fenris, you wound me. I am only a businessman at heart. I don't know what to do. I want S and P to learn all about me, but what choice do I have? We'll bring them here, but. We won't tell them what we don't have to, so they're not a liability. A right call, but ultimately a bad choice, Princess. If Levy captures them for information, that leaves you in an impossible situation. Even if he doesn't get answers, he'll steal of your friends in the upper hand. So bring them here, and don't waste time. Oh good, we've struck a deal. Finn seems concerned, and his face takes on a cold, distant disposition as he's bracing himself for something catastrophic. Great, so how do I reach out to them? Some kind of portal or spell or... Oh, darling! We aren't in Prince's land anymore. Don't be silly! Fly reaches in his pocket and pulls out a cell phone. And he tosses it over to you and you catch it. The magic of technology feels almost unfamiliar in your hand. You type in Esmeralda's number and dial. Hey, Ez, this is Ari. Ari, how are you, darling? Are you in Portland? Yeah, listen, I don't have time to explain. I'm sending a car your way. Where are you and Pete? We're both at work. What's going on? 
Well, something big and I want you here. Oh, okay, you're scaring me, but I'm sure you'll explain. See you soon, hon. You hang up the phone and hand it to Sly. A car is on its way. They'll be here shortly, and in style, I might add. Sly looks up at the princes and gestures a hand at them as if critiquing their style. Do your friends know about them? Not exactly. They've met them before, but I'll have some explaining to do. Yes, well, before they come, we have another matter to discuss. Oh? This is about my payment. Oh, not exactly, you see. I'm happy to have you all here, but you're making the other guests nervous. Ben pours himself a drink and for once seems tickled to be in this place. <laughs> oh, you're kicking us out, Sly. I would never dream of it. However, I would love you to... I'd love to help you get home and out of my establishment as soon as possible. This is in your fight, Sly. There's nothing you can do to help that you're not already doing. A correct statement, followed by an incorrect one. While this isn't my fight, I do have another service to offer. As you know, I love my... I have my share of connections. You need to defeat Levy. Your weapon stands before us. He points at you. The Midnight Star. He's not wrong. I'm a druid, after all. If I can get more training and learn to actually control my powers, that could give us an advantage. Precisely. And I've had the man who can help us with that. And he should be here in three, two... Sly checks his watch, counting the seconds. Ah, yes. Just entering the Black Lotus per usual. My timing's perfect. Cue dramatic entrance and viola. The door opens to Sly's office, and revealing well, none other than Varys the Air Druid. Hello, Midnight Star. Varys, you're here. How have you been since we last met? Well enough. I'm alive and safe for now, at least. You have missed much, Midnight Star. Most of the free fae have railed again behind Metsy. I'm no longer welcome among my own kind. Dean reaches for a sword that isn't there, snarling. You're not welcome among our kind either. Have you forgotten our war? Stop it. Ferris is my friend. He's... My loyal friend and trusted mentor. But more importantly, we need him to defeat Levy, so stand down, Dean. Baron approaches Varys, pushing his head against the druid's resting palm, seeking out a pat. Ben looks on with a frown. Varys looks to Fen, and he takes his in his image with a nod of respect. Fenris, I'd call you the Prince of War, but I believe the Earth Druid is more accurate these days. Congratulations, it is a wondrous gift to have been chosen by the spirits, a burden as well. You'll carry it well. I... Dean steps forward, still angry. Sly, what made you think this is a good idea as a fae? A fae who only seeks a resolution to war. I do not need to prove myself to... Guys, stop. We can hash it out later. Sly puts out a cigar and crosses his arms with a huff, displeased his guests are spatting. Ah, Venice can complete your training, you can defeat Levy, and you can all go home. It's not so simple. We can't train here. This world is too far from the sources of our evil powers, Ari, from where the Midnight Star originated. Even Yami isn't strong enough to manifest here, even in a limited form. So, that's why he's been gone this whole time. Hearing that actually makes me feel better. Now I know Yami hasn't abandoned me. We need to move to the land of the Fae. We can return. We're wanted for death. Who said anything about you two? I only need the Midnight Star. Varys. I'm ready to go whenever. You turn to Dean and Finn. As much as I'd hate leaving you two, this is needed to defeat Levy. I'm not leaving her side. He's mine for the month. Bound by blood oath, isn't that right, Princess? Dean has a point, Varys. King Lucian's contract is still in effect. That won't work. I can't just bring two princes of hell everywhere we'll need to travel. Dean chimes in, smiling. Then don't bother traveling. We can go to my realm. So we can get hanged for treason? No one knows I helped you escape. You'd be safe among my people. That's not a terrible idea. Maybe we can... 
use magic to hide ourselves. Brilliant. My thoughts exactly. We have a magic user right here. He can use magic to form disguises for you. It's too dangerous. Fly yawns and gives a glare to each party. He knows that every minute he's in here and not selling his services, he's losing money. Okay, my darling guest, you've officially bored me. Sort this out yourselves while I have some fun. Dean sets his drink down and considers. He knows Finn won't budge until he's had time to cool off. Mmm, always the wise choice of Sly. I'll join you. Might as well enjoy the perks of being here. Let us know what you decide. The two men take their leave, slipping out the door and into the raging party outside. My brother needs to learn to take life more seriously. And you actually need to cool off. Bears turns to you. Forgive the question, Ori, but that was Asher. Asher is... Same as always, a hot mess. Words put Varys at ease. Finn looks on, confused. Varys uh, looks him over, handing the Earth Druid. Well, the stories are true, then. When the Earth Druid was last seen, she was pregnant. Midnight Star fell, we drew its slumbers, and the Earth Druid as well. So we thought it assumed her child died in battle, but there were rumors. Rumors that he yet lived and was raised by wild wolves. Ferris looks down at Baron and pats him on the head. Rumors that he had taken by the vampires and used as a blood sacrifice to their gods. And one barely whispered rumor that he was the heir to the Earth Druid spirit. Finn perks up an opportunity to answer some questions. Did you know her? The woman that gave birth to me. I did. We were bonded by the spirits just as uh, we three are now bonded to each other and to the remaining druids of water and fire. But Orin is dead, right? He can't come back? Correct. The fire spirit Riku will pick the next chosen one. Our people need us, Midnight Star, and the Earth Druid, all of us. But who are my people? I've been raised a prince of hell, a demon hated and despised by your people. You think they will accept me as a druid after my kind nearly destroyed your world? Varys looks at you, waiting for your permission. He's wondering if he should tell Finn about Avakari, how the kingdom lived on and is still thriving in secret. Finn thinks Fey are nearly extinct, only existing as slaves and rogue bands of rebels, but there's a whole world of Fey just out of reach. We should stay quiet. Shake your head no, signifying a bad idea. There's nods. There is always time to make things right, Finnish. You can still make a difference. Suddenly the doors to Sly's room burst open, and your best friend Esmeralda and her boyfriend Pete walk in. He catches your gaze, she smiles. Ori! He hugs you hard and within an inch of your life, squealing with delight or glee. Look at you, you're so adorable now in your little costume. Hey, as hey Pete, good to see you both. Hey, Ari, so uh, what exactly is this place? Uh, in a role-playing si situation? Seems fun. People out there saying you're a princess crazy, right? When you don't laugh with her, her face falls flat. I say it, it's crazy. It, it is crazy, isn't it? It's... Crazy, but also true. Disbelief takes hold and she turns to Finn, the man she knows as your almost boyfriend who definitely is from our Earth. You, I like you, Finn, but if you're getting my friend mixed up in something dangerous... Finn's eyes go wide as he smirks. He's always like that, isn't her fiery attitude. Been a while, hasn't it? Good to see you are doing well, as. Oh, look, I have a lot to explain, but first I need to tell you why you're here. I... The door to Sly's room bursts open again, hinges clattering with a forceful motion. Dean and Sly run into the room in full panic. Their faces are red and their eyes are wide. We have to go now. What? What's going on? My lopsy, it's loose. What? The hell's a lopsy? You hear a horribly tremendous screech in the main lobby of the Black Lotus. What? What horrible beast? You always brag about? Yes, my pet monster. Someone must have broken it loose. We need to get out of here now. Sly runs to another door and his office swinging it open. 
Quickly, the cleaners will take care of the poor beast, but we need to escape. Especially with two weak humans here. They're my Lopsy's favorite treat. Eat flails his arms around, confusion completely taking over. What the hell is, is happening right now? No time to explain. Hurry. Everyone runs out of Sly's room into a smaller sealed dance floor room, probably reserved for private customers. There are some mirrors back here, quickly. You run behind the stage and find the space filled with mirrors, portals back to Inferno. You look back at Ez and Pete, speechless, as they watch people dive into the mirror. I'm sorry, please promise me we'll still be friends after this. After what? You shove both of them into the mirror, they scream as they fall through the cold reflection of themselves. You hear another horrific screech behind you and jump into the mirror just before hearing a resounding shatter. Well, I hope y'all did enjoy the video. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down description below, links to the social media, discord, and a few links to support me and my content. I do apologize about being a little late on getting chapters and Vampire Girl caught up. Um, as you can clearly know, if you care at all, I have had a metric ton on my plane. So, as I promised, I was going to get this caught up, and I am. Um, I will work on it over the next week to get it all completely done. Um, so we've got about, uh, what, 20 or so chapters? So I'll work on it as quickly as I humanly possibly can. Without further ado, thank you all for tuning in, and I will catch you all in the next video. Peace.